risk is something that's been with us from the beginning of time and life has risk in it and at some level we all know that there is risk but our dependence on computing and uh, how 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 interdependent interlocked everything is in our economy computing has amplified and accelerated risk there are lots of reasons for data breach. It's not just one root cause. Sometimes it's negligence. Sometimes it is a malicious insider. Sometimes it's, it's a, uh, a cyber attack. It's someone outside the organization. Sometimes it's a combination of insider and outsider, like a social engineer working, uh, collaborating with the cyber criminal. It is no longer directed at a small segment of society or a specific business. It's ubiquitous. Whether you're a government, whether you're a uh, commercial entity, online, offline, uh, whether you're a consumer, there's all those threats that are out there now all directed at the same target, and that's you, whatever you may be. Unfortunately, the wake-up call is that we probably are experiencing right now like an Exxon Valdez si size data breach, but we just aren't aware of it. It's happening. It's happening all over. It's probably not just one um, vessel that's leaking fuel. It's probably lots of places, and we have to just do a better job in securing that information. So I think our, the number one threat, and it might seem like a science fiction here, but it's here today, are very sophisticated malware attacks that contain technologies, bots, that can infiltrate a corporate network without detection. So for example, if you're a defense contractor and malware enters the system, steals confidential information, on, and on the way out is, encrypts the footprint and all of the information that's lost, you're in a world of hurt. You have no way of knowing what's at, in jeopardy, what is lost, what's the in, intellectual property that's at risk. So you have to assume the worst case scenario that it's everything. So what do you do? Do you start reinventing the fighter plane of the future or the, the missile system? Today, a typical cyber criminal is actually part of a sophisticated organization. It's not just a hacker, you know, working from a bedroom, 16 years old, trying to break into the Pentagon. It's usually organized crime, and the best and brightest people graduating from the equivalent of MIT in Russia are getting a job with organized crime. These are very brazen people. These are people who actually post their successes on, on blogs. You can read about it if you want to see it, but these people are very, very dangerous. So it's a very sophisticated command and control type of economy that's out there. And it's, it's amazing what they have. You can go and you can find price lists for PayPal accounts, or if you want to buy a credit card that's got a $1,000 limit, you can go buy that for $50. Now they're going after the money. They're organizing themselves as, as such. They're actually creating decent business models to show how can we steal more money from the people in the online world today. And again, with this, this lack of uh, good security perimeters in enterprises, these, these bot herders that have botnets of zombie computers, they can actually rent you access to a thousand node botnet and they can even say, hey, you want to rent a botnet that has some of the nodes inside of XYZ bank or XYZ military institution or things like that. Is this international espionage? Is this an area of theft of intellectual property? Is this just sort of a, uh, a giant vacuum cleaner sucking up every piece of data they can get to see what's of value to them? By looking for specific vulnerabilities, then once getting a foothold in, in the door, for example, getting into a government system through one vulnerability, and then searching the on inside of the government system, looking for more vulnerabilities that they can further establish effectively an electronic beachhead. So if they get blocked one way, they've got another way to come back in. What is protecting us now is the fact that the bad guys actually need the internet to work well in order to make money. That's sort of a scary proposition. It's sort of a, you think of it as a parasitic relationship, a, a symbiosis has been reached with the good uses of computing and the bad uses of computing. But the control is there and the control's in their hands. Uh, C-level executives are just absolutely living in a cloud when it comes to data breach. From their perspective, it's a person at a much lower level in their organization that's responsible for dealing with the consequences of information loss. And they don't see it as a C-level or a board-level issue until it's too late. 
you know, after the fact, when they're paying you know, millions, tens of millions of dollars, it becomes a big deal. So if you're an organization, great big monstrous brand, that brand is probably your most significant asset. And if you lost 2% of the value of that brand because of bad news and you, know, you now are in the category of a bad steward of information, that could be a lot of money. Increasingly, we're seeing more and more CEOs become intimately aware of the risk for a multitude of reasons. One, and the biggest one, I think, has been sort of that governance role that we've seen sort of been a sea change over the past few years. It says, as the chief executive officer of this company, you have a certain governance responsibility, which includes protecting this, protecting that, and the cyber piece comes into that very, very cleanly. For the average company that participated in our study in the United States, it was about $6.65 .6 million of lost economic value. That's both direct cost, indirect cost, and opportunity loss associated with that data breach event. Um, so it's huge. It's a huge number. I mean, $6.65 .6 million would buy a lot of encryption and a lot of DLP. It takes courage and some conviction within people in an organization to be able to say it's not enough just to, to be compliant. It's not enough just to follow the checkbox, but you have to be innovative and you have to think about the risks and you have to do threat modeling and you've got to think out of the box, but you have to be able to bring up the bad news um, to, to the CEO. Otherwise, the bad news is gonna come in the wrong way when they found they've been a victim of a data breach. In one of our studies, we found that about 80 to 81%, somewhere in that range of organizations experience at least one data breach every year. Now that may not be a huge, monstrous, catastrophic data breach, but it's still a significant event for them. And many of these organizations do experience a very large to almost catastrophic level data breach on an annual basis. I believe that cloud computing is actually in the long run a very good thing because it's about taking computing and it's letting experts manage it. That's in the long run. In the short run, you know, we're all in trouble. And doing that, we, we are not being very careful about, you know, what is the cloud. It's a data center somewhere. And we're putting more and more of our business applications and our key data in one location. And if that one location has a breach, then the consequences of that are magnified you know, a thousandfold. There are some people who believe that the problem is going to continue to disintegrate for a couple of reasons. First, there's greater reliance on technology that basically is out of your control. Cloud computing is an example of that. As we start losing control of our data center and the information is now in the hands of third parties in different parts of the universe, how do we really ensure a level of security, a level of data protection? Ten years ago, I couldn't get anyone other than a hardcore, dedicated security person to even talk about these issues. Now we have generals, we have lawyers, we have congressmen, we have senators, we have you know family members, husbands and wives and kids and talk about it in school. So as a consequence, when you think that there's been that much awareness and so much attention borne to this area, clearly we've gotten better. Because things are indeed better. We can do a lot more than we've ever done before and the system is still running like it should. What organizations can do to stay ahead of the problem is just to be better prepared for the issue, the, the likelihood that it could happen, a catastrophe, a huge amount of data, a million or more customer records stolen, a huge malware attack that prevents you from operating your, your IT infrastructure for a period of time. Being ready for that kind of an event is probably the first step. Mm -hmm.